Welcome back, everybody. If you are just tuning in, we just finished talking about baseball, a whole bunch of stuff. We talked about Blake Snell finally getting off the market, Scott Boris's impact on that, what that might have been. Jordan Montgomery is still out there, some blackout dates, the attempted coup uh, in the MLB uh, MLBPA. We talked about that, the repercussions of all of that. Um, but we're going to transition out of baseball now. We are going to move into some football. We're going to start off talking about the Steelers' quarterback room and eventually talk about the Jets because they had a big signing today about five minutes before our show went live um, with Mike Williams. So we're going to talk about the Jets. We're going to talk about the Steelers' quarterbacks. But before we get into either of those, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, leave a tip or donation with a message. It'll pop up. On the bottom of our screen here, we'll have a little discussion about what you uh, wanted to say. Uh, for me, you, again, everyone else to see, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. We appreciate everything that you do give, and we appreciate you for watching. Um, but like I was saying, we are going to transition into the NFL now, uh, talking with the Steelers. We're going to start with the Steelers because the quarterback battle is really fascinating to me. And I know a lot of people have said the Steelers have already named their starter as Russell Wilson, but I am not convinced about that. I am so much less convinced uh, that the Steelers will do that. I know the Steelers are an, a team that is trying to compete. They have made the playoffs. They made the playoffs last year. They snuck in. Um, but they're an interesting team. Uh, you know, they did this with Kenny Pickett, with uh, Mason Rudolph. Both of those guys are gone now, and you replace them with Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, both of whom play very similar but also very different styles of football. Um, you sign Russell Wilson on a one-year veteran minimum deal, uh, and he is he comes in presumably, presumably to be the starter. He has, like a low floor, high ceiling. Um, so he's going to be more likely to just be average, like he was last season. He was average. People think he was bad. That's because they remember him in Seattle. He was great in Seattle. He has lost a step from Seattle to Denver and now to Pittsburgh. He's probably going to be average this year. But you also trade a day three pick, a conditional sixth, for Justin Fields. And you just want him to sit. You're not going to sign him to an extension, especially if he sits. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You have two guys on the roster on expiring contracts, and you always want to have a security policy, but both of these guys are, were starters last year, and they were both kind of average starters, average to bad, but they were both competent NFL starters, I would say. Um, none of whom, they're obviously off their team for reasons. Uh, they weren't great. Um, average is the best you could call their seasons. But when you're talking, when you're trying to figure out who's going to start there, it's a very interesting discussion because it's not like either of them is coming in with, you know, relationships in that locker room. They're both coming in from other teams, Denver and from the Bears. And if you invested very similar amounts into them, uh, you know, you had a day three pick into Fields and uh, a veteran minimum contract into Russell Wilson. But both of those guys, especially Russell Wilson, I feel like has the personality that if you were to bench him, day one, he's not going to play a full season, uh, he would not be very happy. You know, he could have gone anywhere. He probably could have started in a couple places. And if he's not going to start in Pittsburgh, then I'm curious to see how he reacts. And it's not just going to be a job that's handed to him because the Steelers want to win games. They're going to have a genuine battle. There's not that many genuine battles that actually happen anymore. You know, a lot of times they have, they say it's a battle, but you, you know who it's going to be. For instance, up in Seattle, uh, and maybe I'm just wrong about this, but they say it's going to be a battle between Sam Howell and Geno Smith. And quite honestly, I just think that's to light a fire under Geno Smith because not only has Geno Smith been better as of late than Sam Howell, but uh, he also has that locker room. That's his locker room. If he gets benched, it's going to split that locker room, especially if they name Sam Howell the starter day one. That locker room is going to be split, and that's the last thing you want. You cannot have a successful season in any sport 
without having a locker room that's together. That's the most important thing in, for, in sports. You need to be together. You need to have one mindset. You need to be able to work together. And if a locker room is split, you're not going to be able to work together. So that one, to me, doesn't scream a real quarterback battle, although they are claiming it is a quarterback battle. This one in Pittsburgh, though. This one is a real quarterback battle. This one is a true 50-50. Do you want to pr- trot out that young guy? You Do you want to figure out if he is that franchise guy? Um, it's not looking too good for him, and especially if he doesn't start this year, I think he's out of the league. He's never going to start again if he doesn't start this year. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for the Steelers to trade for him and then just watch him wither away as a backup forever. Um, Russell Wilson, on the other hand, we already know what he is. He's on the back end of his career. He is past his prime. He's only going to get worse from here. And for a team like the Steelers that, you know, you have that security blanket, but you also have a great defense. You have a team that made the playoffs with Mason Rudolph and, uh, and Kenny Pickett last season. This is a team that can, that is good enough to make the playoffs with either of these quarterbacks, most likely. Um... So are you really going to sit by and watch as you let a young guy like Justin Fields kind of ride out the rest of his career on a bench? Or are you going to give him a shot? Because it doesn't make sense for me to trade for him if you're not going to give him a shot. I know Russell Wilson probably is a better quarterback than he is. Um, But you're not going to learn anything by starting Russell Wilson. And you invested a little bit more, honestly, into Justin Fields than you did into Russell Wilson. So I'm curi- I'm really, really curious to see, A, how, this co- how the Steelers handle this, because it's a very, very, very delicate situation, I would say. Um, it could really blow up in their face. It's a very delicate situation there in Pittsburgh. Um, but it's also, I, I also want to see how the players themselves react, because I think that's going to be even more important. Um, who's going to rise up in that pressure? Who's going to step up, make that change that they need to and compete? Is that, is that competition what Justin Fields needs? Because he never really was, you know, in competition with the Bears. He was that guy. He always was going to be that guy. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes. If I were the Steelers, I would start Justin Fields week one. Give him a couple games, see what you have with him. You know, you have to be able to make that distinction, and you're not going to be able to make that distinction of whether or not he's a good quarterback by him not playing. Russell Wilson, if you really feel like things are going bad, you can toss him in, and he's going to do what he does. He's going to be fine. Uh, He's going to do his job. He'll be okay. Uh, But you're not going to learn anything by him starting. So if I'm the Steelers, I'm starting Justin Fields day one. Obviously, it's going to be a battle, and they're going to play the best guy because they want to compete in a tough division, a division with the Ravens, a division with the Bengals, a division with the Browns, uh, a division that had three teams in the playoffs last year, and one of those teams was was not the Bengals. Now that they're getting Joe Burrow back, it's they're going to be much better. That is a very, very, very tough division. The AFC North always has been. Uh, and now you have four playoff potential teams in that division, it's going to be a bloodbath in there. Um, and I don't expect any of them to really make it too far because they're going to they're gonna beat each other up too much. They're going to... I mean, you saw it. I know the Ravens made it to the Chiefs, but they were real beat up. They were not... Uh, they, they did not come out in full force against the Chiefs in the playoffs. Uh, that AFC North is brutal. Uh, Ravens, Chiefs. It's also such a physical division. You know, the Browns and the Steelers and the Ravens all had elite defense, elite defenses last season. Um, so we, I'm, I'm very, very excited for this division this season. Um, and I'm very curious about how the Steelers handle it because I think that is going to be the probably the biggest X factor in that division. We know that the Ravens are going to be good. They lost a lot this offseason, but they still have Lamar Jackson, and they have Derrick Henry, and they have Mark Andrews, and they have uh, Rashad Bateman, and uh, a whole bunch of weapons. Zay Flowers as well. That offensive line is still fine. They did lose a couple pieces. We'll talk about that actually coming up next uh, because they traded one of those pieces to the Jets, and that defense is still very well put together. They did lose Patrick Queen, but they kept Justin Matabike, who was kind of the center of that defense, 
they need to fill up linebackers in the draft. That's what I expect them to target, linebackers or offensive line. Um, but they're still very good. They're still very talented. They were the one seed last year. The Steelers, we've been talking about them. They made the playoffs with bad quarterback play and a great defense. Um, they have Mike Tomlin, and as long as they're there, they're going to compete to win. You know, he's never had a losing season, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows that. He's never had a losing season in his entire tenure, and it doesn't seem like he intends to start now, especially on a contract year for him. Um, do the Steelers bring him back if he only goes 9-8? and eight? I, I don't know if they do. Um, but that'd be very fascinating to see. Uh, and that's a whole other topic for midseason football. Uh, the Bengals are getting Joe Burrow back. Um, they're still shopping T. Higgins. That's going to be a big loss for them. But they still have Jamar Chase. They still have that elite defense in the back. Uh, Trey Hendrickson up front. You know, it's a very, very underrated defense there in Cincinnati. Um, and then the Browns. They made the, they made the playoffs with uh, Depoy, uh, Miles Garrett, and starting four quarterbacks, Joe Flacco took them into the playoffs as a hot, one of the hottest teams at the end of the season. That is going to be a bloodbath of a division, and I'm so excited for it. Uh, the AFC North is all the way back. The AFC North always has some of the best rivalries in the NFL. You know, you think of the old-fashioned Ravens-Steelers rivalry with Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu. <laughs> Those were always fun. Hard-hitting games. Defenses really showed out. It was brutal. And I feel like that's happening again in the AFC North. We love that kind of football. <laughs> At least I do. Um, but anyway, coming up in our final segment, we are going to talk about the Jets. The Jets revamped their entire team. Their entire offensive line is, is fixed. I, I mean, changed, not fixed. They basically swapped out the entire O-line for a new one. Uh, so we'll break that down. They also took in Mike Williams today to run opposite Garrett Wilson, another weapon for Aaron Rodgers. We're going to go over all of that, their outlook on the season, uh, and more coming up in our next segment on Sports by GSMC, on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am Jeremy Lapidus. Stick around. We'll be right back. 